The town of Restorford is under attack by evil forces. The militia decimated. Stalwart heroes are needed to face this threat. However, the raiders have taken up residence in an old, long-abandoned dwarven mithril mine. What vile secrets does this stronghold conceal? And what ancient evil did the dwarves uncover when they delved too deeply in search of their precious metal? Coming up right here on RPG Retro Reviews. One, I'm Captain Courageous, and I review old school modules and games and try to give them a fun and informative analysis. This week, I'm taking a look back at L3 Deep Dwarven Delve, the last official first edition module for the Lendor Isles series, published for Dungeons and Dragons Silver Anniversary box set in 1999. There's a lot of fun trivia and backstory for this video, but first, a big shout out and thank you to Black Spire Fantasy for sponsoring this video. Are you interested in the style of old school role playing games but would prefer the integration of a few modern mechanics into your system? Do you enjoy the works of Robert E. Howard, Carl Edward Wagner and other authors of the pulp fantasy genre? If so, there's a new tabletop role playing game on the horizon, Swords and Chaos, an RPG game that weds old school and new school design to produce a pulse pounding sword and sorcery experience that is finely crafted to emulate the feeling of a classic tale straight from the pulps. Play larger than life characters in a grim and wicked age. Swords and Chaos is powered by the Siege Engine of Troll Lord Games, so if you are familiar with the OSR, Castles and Crusades, or even 5th edition, you will be able to dive right in with ease. Check out Black Spire Fantasy's Kickstarter right now. What are you waiting for? Pledge your allegiance to Swords and Chaos. The Swords and Chaos Kickstarter is fully funded, but there are only a few days left to make your pledge. All right, just a quick spoiler warning. I will be revealing just what the dwarves uncovered in the deep recesses of their ancient mithril mind. So if you intend on playing in it, you might wish to get your DM to watch this video in hopes they might run it for your group. Otherwise, let's get started. The Silver Anniversary box set celebrated the 25th anniversary of Dungeons & Dragons. There were only 5,000 copies printed and it contained reprints of a variety of material going back to the game's earliest days. The home's basic version of Dungeons & Dragons, B2 Keep on the Borderlands, G1-3 to The Giant Series, I6 Ravenloft, S2 White Plume Mountain, and interestingly enough, a never before printed first edition module, L3 Deep Dwarven Delf by Len Kafka. I've already given extensive coverage to the two previous modules in the series, L1 The Secret of Bone Hill and L2 The Assassin's Knot, so you might wish to check those reviews out, but it's not required for this video. While all three modules were commissioned by TSR in 1979, L1 was published in 1981 and L2 in 1983. After Gary Gygax's ouster from TSR in 1985, a lot of those who were friends and supporters of Gary also got the boot, and thus L3 Deep Dwarven Delve sat unpublished for 19 years until TSR was purchased by Wizards of the Coast in 1997. Like all the L series modules, Deep Dwarven Delve was drawn directly from the Kafka's own campaign, the Secret of Bone Hill and Assassin's Knot were not adventures done in the typical D&D style of the time, but Deep Dwarven Delve is, as it is a site-based exploration adventure of an abandoned Dwarven mithril mine. While the module remained unpublished until 1999, it is known that Lakafka ran it at Gen Con 12 in 1979. After Lakafka's Le Mans Tiny Hut series, and Dragon Magazine ended in 1986, his presence in the industry faded. However, around 2010, he began an association with the popular Dragon's Foot website, a forum that is primarily dedicated to first edition Dungeons and Dragons, though discussions and topics from many popular OSRs and other editions of the game can be found there. There you can 
find fully realized adventure modules for the Lendor Isles that can be freely downloaded. L4, Devil Spawn. L4C, the Lendor Isles Companion, as well as L5 and L5A through C that gives you a substantial amount of campaign information for the town of Croton. Maps, different rules, options, both for the DM and the players. And of course, L5B is a 96-page guide that details five full adventures in the area. These can still be freely downloaded. A link for the Dragon's Foot Forum is in the description. Deep Dwarven Delve begins with an off-screen raid on the town of Restiford. Only one of several that had been taking place for months, though this particular one was extremely severe and results in the burning of the town hall. Marauding humanoids, orcs, ogres, and bugbears attacked the town proper, and while the militia was able to force the attackers back, many were killed and injured. An unnamed ranger, part of the town's militia, tracked the raiders back to their stronghold. However, during her escape back to Restonford, she was gravely injured, lying near death. She has given the location of the Marauder's base of operations, thus a call has been put out for adventurers to answer the call and bring these brigands to justice. The lair of the Marauders is, of course, the deep dwarven delve of the module's title, an ancient dwarven mithril mine in which the dwarves dug too deep and uncovered and an ancient shrine to Beelzebul. The shrine's evil influence corrupted many of the dwarven miners back in the day, especially a cleric named Frelprick, who became the Archdevil's most powerful agent. He constructed a powerful iron golem, supposedly to help with the mining, but in one bloody night, he slew all his comrades. This was 200 years prior, and now the corrupting influence of the shrine has caused a contingent of humanoids to gather at the site of the abandoned mine, occupying its upper level. The module itself, then, is broken up into essentially two parts. The first is the penetration into the humanoids' stronghold and gaining some traction there so they can explore the two deeper levels. The second part is traversing the next two levels to ultimately reach the lowest level and discovering the Fane of Beelzebul and closing the gate to hell there and thus ending the devil's influence in the area. Opposing are a variety of strong opponents, the first being the dwarven cleric Frelpik, who is 8th level. Frelpik is the main big bad of the scenario, but two other NPCs can cause the heroes quite a bit of trouble. There is Venzenor, a barbed devil, and Skirpus, the bone devil, that will provide quite the challenge to the party's success. It is expected that the Deep Delve will take several game sessions and that the PCs will return to town to recuperate and then return to the Deep Delve to continue their explorations. Any slain PCs left behind will be subject to an anime dead spell cast by Felprick. I did find it a bit annoying that there is no wilderness map provided for this adventure with the mines said to occupy one of the many hills that surround the town of Restonford. Given that the adventure states that the PCs are expected to return to town to rest up between forays into the mines, it must be relatively close, but no exact proximity is given. The hill itself is 200 feet high and heavily wooded. There are two entrances to the top level, about 80 feet from ground level. The main entrance cannot be seen from the ground, but resides roughly on a circular outcropping 60 feet in diameter. The entrance itself is square, 30 feet wide and 20 feet high, perfectly cut from the surrounding stone, and a dwarf or gnome will most certainly recognize the construction as dwarven. Similarly, the back door entrance is also 80 feet from the ground and cannot be seen from the base of the hill. Here there is a 50 foot diameter flat rock outcropping with a 10 foot wide, 15 foot high entrance. Both entrances are guarded by orcs with an alarm system down the entry tunnels consisting of a gong to be sounded in the event of trouble. To further complicate matters of discovery, the entrances are obscured by ancient dwarven magic so that viewing them from 200 feet away or more will make it appear as if the rocky hillside continues unbroken. The maps for the mines themselves are a bit unusual, especially in regards to the scaling which is one square equals 30 feet. 
These are very minimalist maps. Encounters in the top level will be tough as there are trolls and ogre lairs as well as a healthy number of orcs. Room 8 on this level contains a teleporter which will allow someone with a special Beelzebul ring to teleport to level 3 room 38 along with anyone in the room at the time. The ring is worn by the NPC magic user Enthar who will most likely be encountered on this level. Note that teleporting to room 38 without proper preparations will most likely result in the death of the party. Not only are non-evil characters subject to a stunning effect upon arrival at the receiving teleport platform with no saving throw, but they are also aged 10 years unless saving throw versus death magic is made. But that's not the worst of it. The only means of egress from the room is to the south where there is an iron door sealed by powerful magics. Hidden in the shadows near the door is an iron golem awaiting to crush intruders who awakens as soon as non-evil characters enter the room. If the brute force of the iron golem doesn't kill them, surely inhaling his leaking chlorine gas will. Ideally, the PCs will discover the entrance to the lower level of the mines in room 4, the ogre's lair, though to do so will require finding the location of a secret door. Fortunately, if the party has either a dwarf or a gnome in their party, the outlines of the door glow, revealing its location to them. Beyond the door on the wall of the tunnel in Dwarven Runes is the rather alarming message. Cure the darkness that lies below and all the horrors it hath spawned. Foe Spider tried and Foe Spider died. His foolish bravery has doomed us all. Certainly that will clue the heroes in to the fact that there is more going on here than just a gathering of evil humanoids. Traversing to level 2 will reveal quite a few dwarven remains and that's where the trouble starts as the evil dwarven cleric Frelpik has reanimated the bodies as undead skeletons. Though strangely enough they don't attack the dwarves in the party unless they are attacked in kind. Room 9 contains an orc car that is still able to roll freely and will transport up to three human-sized characters all the way to room 11. However, alarmingly, this room is bisected by a 60-foot deep pit, so it's totally possible for ill-prepared characters to be plummeted into its depths. The room also contains a rather nasty surprise, a naga, and her hidden treasure contains quite a prize, an intelligent elven longsword named Zalko. Interestingly, the blade is chaotic neutral and will give lawful and non-neutral characters quite the time, including damaging them just for touching it and disintegration for paladins and lawful clerics. However, it can be reasoned with and it knows its former master was killed by the cleric Frauprick and wishes revenge so it's entirely possible to strike a bargain with the powerful weapon. This second level has a lot of very interesting characters. A shrine to the Dwarven gods, the wraith of one of the Dwarven smiths, and some very helpful magic items can be found along the way here. Level 3 is the finale of the module. As already mentioned, there is a barb devil here, an iron golem, and this is where Frelpik can be found, eliminating Beelzebul's cleric, destroying his temple, and the portal to hell that resides there ends the threat to Restonford and the Isles. But it's not quite over yet. With the destruction of the portal, the mine begins to sequentially collapse upon itself, beginning with the temple, and it's a race to the surface to survive. Given the release of this module was in 1999, the artwork, while in the black and white old school style, is expertly rendered by artist Wayne Reynolds. I really enjoyed all the art in this module, and it does a great job of evoking the proper atmosphere. The cartography is by Chris Perkins. Getting a copy of this module is quite easy, even though I would not recommend trying to track down the Silver Anniversary Edition, as those are quite expensive on eBay. drive RPG has this available for print on demand for just $11, and that includes the PDF. I've got this print, and it's extremely well done, and as good as the original copy in my opinion. So, let's go ahead and take a look at L3 Deep Dwarven Delve on my D20 scale of style presentation and value. Style-wise, Wizards of the Coast did a great job emulating the classic TSR trade dress. 
The artwork is top-notch, though I'm not exactly thrilled with the cartography. It's very minimalist in my opinion, and the one square equals 30 feet is not that endearing to me. If one were to describe this for a mapper in the traditional style, it could get quite dicey, as one would be giving out odd measurements in feet, but as a theater of the mind experience, I'd say the details here are quite well done. I also think that the lack of a wilderness map that shows the mine's proximity to Restedford is a bit of an issue, and certainly would have been helpful. All of that said, the old school style of the module shines through here. I'll go ahead and rate this a 14. The presentation is straightforward, and there are a ton of details. This feels like an ancient dwarven mine, even if the map doesn't do a great job of rendering its grandeur. This is also a very dangerous adventure, and I can see how this could rack up quite the body count against the party used to fighting their way through everything. This thing is a hornet's nest, and if you poke it, it will sting you badly. However, if the party takes his time, goes back to town to rest up, is careful with supplies, and works their way carefully through the many tricks, traps, and interesting role-playing encounters, they can emerge victorious. The NPCs and their motivations are all very well developed, and Beelzebul's Temple is a very real threat. I'm going to go ahead and rate this an 18. Finally, let's talk value. This module is not for every group. Those parties that are not of a heroic bent, who prefer hack and slay over careful puzzle solving, will probably end up slaughtered and unhappy. Best just to skip it. However, this can provide several great evenings of adventure and fun for those who enjoy an old school dungeon with opportunities for role playing puzzle solving and engaging combats. Given the high quality of the print on demand product from Drive-Thru RPG, this is definitely a winner for those who enjoy this style of module. Thus, I'm going to give this a 19. And that brings my overall rating for L3 Deep Dwarven Delve to a 17. Very good. That's about all I have for you today. I hope you found this look back at the Lendor Isle series fun and interesting. I really enjoyed bringing it to you. Coming up, I have another fun module review for you. Mark Tarmino from Dark Wizards Games has been at it again and has sent me his latest Gonzo Old School module, a mini 1E adventure called Shadow of the Necromancer. Of course, let me thank all of my patrons who make these videos possible. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. Please give this video a like, comment, and share. Check out my Teespring store for great gaming swag and t-shirts. Get into my RPG Retro Review community on Facebook and at me on Twitter. And of course, maybe you might become a patron yourself. Or alternatively, you can just leave a tip through my PayPal tip jar. And as always, my friends, may your D20 roll true and game on. <laughs>